it's easier to fly a Raptor than it is to fly a Cessna because you really have to pay attention to what you're doing in a Cessna. In a Raptor, I could put my kid in there and he can do this all day at whatever speed and nothing bad will happen to the airplane. It's really quite spectacular how they did that. Uh, so here's what I'm here to tell you. The same stuff that you're learning with respect to Cessnas and all the stuff with respect to the ground school, um, there's no difference between this and between my beloved Raptor. It's the same thing. So there's great relevance. And in fact, I'll tell you, this is actually harder to fly than the Raptor. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go through. All right, so more fun and games. Why does a Cessna look the way that it does? And why does a Raptor look the way that it does? What were the engineers trying to do? So you, you've brought up two things. One is the position of the wings, right? So in a Cessna, uh, the wings are obviously, well, in a lot of airplanes, really, not just Cessnas, but in a Cessna, the wings are directly above you, big Hershey bar wing. You know, why do they put the wings this way in a Cessna? <laughs> You're doing great so far. Keep going, man. I'm, I'm going to answer that. Uh, get, get in or out of a Cirrus in the heavy rain, and you will immediately yeah. see the value of that Cessna wing. Yeah. They did this so that my wife doesn't yell at me in bad weather conditions so that you can get inside the airplane without getting completely wet. The other part about the high wing is it's great for visibility, looking down, right? Um, where this is terrible is if you're turning and you have to be able to see through the wing because you're kind of doing the old, you know, looking over the side to see uh, kind of out the outside. So that's one advantage, right, of where Raptor, right? It's not a high wing or a, it's kind of like a mid wing, if you will, but that wing is well after the cockpit for what reason? Yeah, mock. So, so explain mock. Uh, fast, closer you get to the speed of sound, more compressibility is important. Yep. Uh, aerodynamically, the wing really behaves like it's going at the speed normal to the leading edge. Yeah. Here's your swept wing, right? Here's the air as it comes over the wing, right? And then what ends up happening is uh, really what you care about is the air that's going over top of the wing that's normal to the cord line of the wing itself. You know what I mean when I say cord? Right, just like this imaginary line. So on a Hershey bar wing, all of that air hits the wing and it goes directly over top of that cord line of the wing. So like when we talked about over here, the wings have camber. So what happens to the air as it goes over top of any wing? It doesn't matter if it's a fighter wing or whatever else, but what, what happens to the velocity of the air as it goes over top? It goes faster, right? So if I'm already going fast and air hits my wing and goes over top of my wing and goes faster than the rest of the airplane, uh, that's gonna cause a problem when you get to very high speeds approaching Mach, because what ends up happening is you'll, you'll get a shock wave forming on that wing, and the moment you get a shock wave forming there, that's like a big brick wall to the, to the wind, and that causes all types of drag downstream, slows down the airplane, all types of things. So what they found is I can sweep the wing, right? When I sweep the wing, some of that air is normal to the cord line. So if this is like the fuselage over here and here's the wing and it comes back over here, um, some of that air is gonna be that way and some of that air is gonna actually go out and go, uh, go span wise, if you will, like this. So I'm trying to draw this correctly to get the, to get the right angles, but you, you kind of get my point. So some of that air goes span wise. Some of the reason why you have wing, winglets, right, to present, pre prevent some of that drag that happens at the winglets. But then also what you're worried about is rather than the full component of this wind, you're only worrying about the wind that's normal to the flow of the way the cord line is set up. So that's why they sweep the wings, right? But, um, so look at that plan form, and what do you notice with regards to stealth? It's all angles. All angles, right? That angle, that angle, that angle. Yeah, no right angles. So the reason is, and I'll do my high-tech uh, pizza, you know, aid here, right? So who's, who's double E in here? Anyone double E for MIT? Okay. So if you're a beam of radar energy, you love this, right? You love when you have a nice flat thing directly to reflect. So all that radar energy you put at me goes right back at you, right? Now what happens if I take that panel and I go like this a little bit, right? So yeah, there's not so much. Now I'll really mess with your mind. What happens if I do that, right? And now you have to start dealing with angles and edges, right? Um, Raptor is this constant fight between the double E guys and the aeronautical engineers. Um, when you make an airplane like this and you make angles like this and you make it there's no right angles or whatever else like that, you're exactly right. It greatly reduces the stealth. Now, this is not Wonder Woman's airplane. It's not like you just become invisible and no one can see you, um, but it's very, very hard to see uh, on radar. Um, but there's a challenge in that because when you make an airplane that looks like this, which the double E guys tend to like, 
the aero engineer guys tend to hate because it makes the airplane unstable. Uh, so we'll talk about that. Um, this airplane, very, very stable. Very, very stable. So I'll cut to the chase. These are ailerons. These are so these are the flaperons here on the inside. These are the ailerons. Um, in a Raptor, uh, those ailerons deflect differentially. So just like you have in a Cessna, they can also both deflect up. They can also both deflect down. The flaps on the inboard are flaps and ailerons, flaperons. So they can deflect up and they can flect down. We'll show why that brings up some neat stuff. Okay, rudder, obviously, back here. Um, in this airplane, when I push the rudder left, the rudder deflects left, I deflect right. Um, this has two rudders. Uh, both rudders can deflect one way, they can deflect the other way. They can both deflect in, and there's some reasons why you'd wanna do that. And they can both deflect out. Uh, the last piece I'll give you is uh, back here, normally this would be called an elevator. But on a supersonic airplane, we call these uh, horizontal stabilators, which are a thing of beauty. I was a propulsion guy, aeronautics engineer kind of thing. Um, it's almost like modern art masterpiece to me. Um, those engines uh, are, have the ability to call what's called thrust vectoring. They'll swing up and they'll swing down. At very, very low speeds where the flight control surfaces might not be doing well, I can still move the airplane just by using the, the thrust alone. At high altitude, where I don't have a lot of density, same thing, I can maneuver the airplane just by using the thrust alone. All right, a couple other things we'll go through. Landing mode. Pilot's done nothing, touchdown. Throttles are back, gear handles down, and all of this stuff happens here. Let me get this zoomed in here. So that's the aileron, it's up. Holy crap, the other one's up too. Um, the flaperon goes up on either side. Um, the rudders, you can see how they're both kind of, def kind of towing in there a little bit. Um, the reason it's doing that is it's trying to transfer all of that weight from the wings and put it into the gear. So it's trying to kill all of the lift on the wings and transfer that to the landing gear so that you have the maximum traction on the wheels as you hit the brakes as you slow down. In an F-15, because we talked about that a little bit earlier, F-15, can, you can get it to 500, 600 miles an hour. You can take both hands on the stick, you can pull that stick all the way back, and you will rip the wings off the airplane and you will turn it into a big ball of metal cascading down to the ground because you have over G'd the airplane. On a Raptor, there used to be in the pilot operating manual a little blurb that said, quote, you can maneuver this airplane with, quote, reckless abandon, um, and you will not over G the airplane, you will not depart the airplane from controlled flight. They did a spectacular job uh, allowing this airplane to get right to the edge of performance but not going over the top. Somebody better here. I know, totally. <laughs> so at that speed, again, it's a G command system. Pilot is commanding a certain G rate, and minor deflections are happening all the way here back along the back edge of the airplane. Pilot has no input on that. The system is doing everything possible to command that G that the pilot has asked for. You'll see one other maneuver here. Pause for a second. So what this maneuver is is, and again, right, slow speed, um, airplane's going straight up, and what they're trying to do is basically pitch forward completely um, and get the airplane, so it's almost like you're flying an L, like you're going straight up, and then you wanna pitch forward and then accelerate out horizontally that way. Um, the way it gets that is through that, that thrust vectoring that happens. But as that maneuver happens, again, all the pilot is doing is just doing a direct push forward on the stick. Watch what happens to all the flight controls in the back of the airplane to keep that airplane going exactly where the air pilot wants it to play. So you'll see huge deflections out of that horizontal stabilator. It's kind of neat, you can keep playing. By the way, watch this maneuver here real quick. So that's the thrust vectoring um, kind of kicking in to really get the airplane. So initially that's the flight control surfaces and then as things slow down, the thrust vectoring kicks in to basically turn the airplane into a flat plate. When I was telling you it flies about the same speed as like a Cessna, um, I mean this is those types of maneuvers there where you can get away with that. Again, watch the flight control surfaces in the back and what's going on is um, the airplane is essentially pirouetting in the sky. So it's falling straight down, but it's very controllable. It's flying at speeds about 60 to 65 miles an hour, um, but very, very controllable. And you'll see every bit of flight control surface on the back end of this airplane deflecting to do what it needs to do.